Hello, I'm June Edwards, and this is Senior Topics. And uh, I have to tell you, in just a few days, it's going to be fall. It feels like fall already. And I know when I am covering the history of California during our discussion, and I talk about Indians, seems like it's always in the fall time. I'm wearing my feather uh, earrings. I don't remember who gave these to me, but this is actually the first time I'm wearing them. And I wanted to do something special for you. So that's why I'm wearing them. When I get to see you in person, I have costumes and I have an Indian costume I can bring. But for now, this is about as much as I'm going to dress up. Although I know I'm going to have to be decorating pretty soon for fall because summer is quickly uh, leaving us behind. Okay, well, you know, it's already been fall for a few weeks up north. So what do we have to complain about, right? We're the land of a living summer just about year round. Well, let's take a look at our calendar themes and we're starting with September 17th. And I can hardly believe that we're three quarters through 2021. What happened? I don't know. It's like Alice in Wonderland said, the faster I run, the further behind I get. And uh, that seems to be what, what the deal is here, right? Okay, so looking at the 17th, it is Citizenship Day for our legal immigrants. It is also National Apple Dumpling Day and Constitution Day. And we covered the signing of the US Constitution. And that sets up the basis for our whole government and our society. And that's all the laws that we need to follow. And Constitution was first ratified in 1787. So it's been over 200 years. We're coming up to our 250th year in 2026. I hope we're all around for it. The 18th of September is when the New York Times newspaper was first published in 1851. Their readership numbers have gone way, way, way down. And uh, I personally feel they have become less objective. I was trained as a journalist and I remember that they told us not to take sides except on the opinion page and to report the news as factually as possible. But that doesn't seem to be happening these days, does it? Okay, on the 19th, it is International Talk Like a Pirate Day. Ahoy there, matey. And see if you can scare your grandkids a little bit with that. They're starting to think about what they want to wear for Halloween. So maybe somebody will be a pirate this year. Who knows? It is also the date in 1819 that the poet John Keats wrote his beautiful poem to Autumn. And it's a great great tribute to one of the favorite times of year for so many of us. On the 20th of September is when the first railroad station opened, but I don't have the date. And it must have been on the East Coast somewhere. That's about all I can tell you. Magellan started his search for the Spice Islands in 1519. And it's because of brave explorers like him that we can do our fall baking with the pumpkin spices, the cardamom, the uh, cinnamon, uh, the sugar, and all the wonderful spices that we use. Yeah, I know sugar is not a spice for those cooks in the crowd, but, uh, you know, somebody had to discover where to get it because it was not around here. It is also the day that we recognize prisoners of war and those who are missing in action. So it is POW Recognition Day. Very, very solemn day. And that's coming up very soon. 
the 21st is miniature golf day. As some people celebrate that more in the spring, but I don't even know if the miniature golf places have opened back up. I hope they have. I hope they didn't uh, go bankrupt during the long, long lockdowns. Uh, it is World Gratitude Day, and we can be grateful for each other and for our many blessings, not just on Thanksgiving Day, but and not just on World Gratitude Day, but I think when you foster a grateful heart, it's so good for your health and our attitudes too. The United States has declared that September 20, not United States, sorry, the United Nations has declared that it is International Peace Day and we need to work as much as we can, starting with our families and our neighborhoods to have a peaceful coexistence. It is also the birthday in 1866 for the wonderful science fiction and fantasy author, H.G. Wells, War of the Worlds and Journey to the Center of the Earth and so many other wonderful inventions he came up with as he wrote his many, many exciting stories. September 22nd, the Band-Aid was invented in 1920. You ever put a Band-Aid on one of your kids' boo-boos? And if it had a picture of Superman or Wonder Woman on it, didn't it make them feel better, a lot quicker? It is Elephant Appreciation Day. If you see any elephants around, give them a hug or at least a little peanut. I know they love to eat those. It is also ice cream cone, the day it was invented in 1903. And we still have enough of a warm spell. We can still enjoy our Klondike bars, our ice cream cones, and the ice cream man ringing his bell as he comes merrily down the street. Also on September 22nd, the United States Post Office officially opened in 1789. Do you remember who the first postmaster was? His initials are BF, not for best friend, but for Benjamin Franklin. But you know who ran the post office while he was gallivanting around in France and uh, the DC swamps and Philadelphia and out on all his business calls? It was his wife, Deborah, who was the first postmistress. She's the one that organized it and started substations for the postal service and really got it going. But you don't hear much about her. September 23rd will be the first day of autumn where the earth, it's not tilted towards the sun, which is summer. It's not tilted away from the sun, which is winter. It is straight up. Our big ball of our planet is straight up. It is the equinox. It is equal 12 hours of night, 12 hours of day, and then the days will start to get shorter. So that is coming up in the middle of the week, very, very shortly. It is also the day that the flash bulb was first used in photography in 1930 to get better light for our pictures. And in 1889, Nintendo Company was founded. What did they make? It wasn't the video games and all the stuff they have now. It was playing cards. They made the playing cards in our country. The 24th, <clears throat> the end of Rosh Hashanah, which is about 10 days long, the Jewish holiday for their new year and day of atonement and repentance. It is the National Bluebird of Happiness Day. And our Supreme Court was established in late September of 1789. The last one I'm going to share with you today is September 25th. The wonderful movie based on the books, Mary Poppins, 
debuted all the way back in 1964. Oh my gosh, Julie Andrews and Dick Van Dyke and putting animation with real live people. Boy, have they come a long way with that. In 1513 though, Balboa was busy discovering the Pacific Ocean and eventually they would find the coast of California. It is National Comic Books Day. Where would we be without Superman, Batwoman, Batman, uh, you know, Captain America, uh, the Joker, all the villains and heroes of the comics that we've grown up with. It is also the day in 1956 when the first transatlantic telephone cable began operating so that we could have phone calls back and forth way before satellites. And that's as far as I can take you. But do remember it's National Piano Month. It is National Sewing Month, National Classical Music Month, and National Good Manners Month. And what a busy month it is. Things just seem to really go even faster, don't they, when it's this time of the year. But now we're going to move on. And we had started to feature last week on making a healthy home. And if it's not your home, if you're living in a residential facility, it's your apartment or your studio room or however it is that you are living. Last week, we talked about removing shoes by the front door and wearing slippers so you don't haul in all the dirt and germs. Using natural cleaners, remembering to scrub toothbrush holders and don't overuse sponges for wiping off counters. Using a portable ultraviolet light to disinfect rooms. The UV light is good for that. Using colorful colors in rooms to lighten your mood. And this week we're continuing. You want to have windows with natural sunlight like I do out there. You can see I've changed my lighting and I've made it lighter. Although I got a special kind of fabric that keeps the heat out in the summer but lets the light in, and I do appreciate that. You want to use HEPA air filters to remove 99.97% of the pollutants in our air. And you know, the LA Basin fills up with all kinds of pollutants. They say it's the ones you cannot see that are the absolute worst. You wanna open your windows and bring in fresh air when there's no fires nearby and it's not smoky. And right now, thank God it's not smoky. This time last year, it was terrible. Uh, remember that when you're using natural ingredients, salt is a good cleaning agent. Steam humidifiers work really well once the air becomes cold and dry to slow the spread of viruses like COVID-19 or flus or colds. And water filters on faucets or pitchers are better than bottled water, which is not strictly regulated. And they say the plastics leak into the bottled water. I'm trying to use glasses as much as possible and get away from all the plastics. And make sure the filters in your air conditioners are changed regularly, okay? So that's all the hints. And I got a cute little picture here for you up on canvas. She's been busy working on her apartment. You remember where, when skirts were that short? Man, I would not wear a skirt that short now, but then you know what? When you're a senior, you don't have to. Who cares? All right, okay, we're moving on here. We were talking about the history of California and we are coming up to Native American Day. And so I wanted to talk about the Indians of this area, 
We used to call them the Chumash or the Gabrielino, but the official name over the entire 4,000 square mile area was the Tongve. The Tongve people resided from Los Angeles Basin and the Southern Channel Islands all the way over across the mountains into the Mojave Desert. In the pre-colonial era, people lived in as many as 100 villages. And they were usually identified more by the village name than by a tribal name. Now, during the colonization by Spain and Mexico, the people were referred to as the Gabrielinos because of the San Gabriel mission and the Fernandinos from the mission, San Fernando Rey, Rey mission. And Tongve was the widely circulated name and didn't really gain popularity until the beginning of this last century. If you wanna see what they look like and what their village was like, there is a model village built to scale and you can walk through it, even through the huge grass uh, woven hut that the people would share as a community at the Heritage Park in Santa Fe Springs. And usually every September, the Indians have a huge powwow there with Indians coming from as far away as New Mexico and North and South Dakota and up North and down South. And they all come there to the area of the Tongva, Tongve, excuse me. And that's where they usually celebrate. Well, we know that the Gaspar de Portola land expedition in 1769 led to the founding of Mission San Gabriel by Father Junipero Serra. And before that, the very first one that he founded was in San Diego. And then what happened to the Indians? Well, they did try to rebel, but they were no match for the weapons of the Spanish, mainly their firepower. So even though there were some uprisings, they were quickly subjugated and enslaved and forced to work on the missions and in the fields and doing whatever the Spanish and later the Mexicans wanted them to do. In 1821, <clears throat> Mexico gained its independence from Spain. Actually, September 16th, I believe, is Mexican Independence Day. But they were just as mean to the Indians as anybody else had been. So what did the Spanish women do while the men were out hunting and fighting warfare and fishing, stuff like that. The women supervised the cooking, the weaving. They did the laundry at the missions. They would board the ships to help unpack the supplies. The missions did offer new foods to the Indians. Many did rebel though and did not want to work for the missions, but then they would be locked in a cell or placed in stocks or whipped. In 1821, after a 10 year war, Mexico got its independence from Spain. The news reached the California governor of the Republic of Mexico, and he challenged the power of the Catholic church. He secularized all of the missions, kicked all the Indians out of them and left them pretty much destitute and landless. The missions were divided by powerful Spanish families into ranchos and land grants. The Indians were supposed to get 4.3 million acres, but they never did get much. Even to this day, the American federal government has never officially recognized them or given them land grants that were promised to them over 150 years ago. So that's about as far as I'm going to go with the Tongva. I did want to say uh, they have tried to open casinos in different areas. The state recognized them enough that they could be recognized as nonprofit and have some casinos. 
but there are four distinct groups among the remaining Tongve, and they even have different names for themselves and even the way they punctuate it. And they're still fighting to this day and in court. In 2013, it was reported that the four Tongve groups had applied for federal recognition and they have almost 4,000 recognized descendants still alive today. They are not extinct and they're trying to bring their language back uh, to some extent. So that's pretty much what I want to say about them. Um, I don't have any of their artifacts because there's really not that much that they made that would have survived that was stuff that was very biodegradable. However, <clears throat> I have a play written by Randall Reinstead adapted from Tales and Treasures of California's Missions based on a true story. And it's called The Faith of Padre Sarah. Have to use your imagination. The year is 1770, six years before the signing of the Declaration of Independence. The place is Mission San Diego, the first Spanish settlement in present day California. The Spanish have moved north from Mexico to establish new outposts. With them is Padre Junipero Serra. Serra's fondest hope is to found a number of missions. He wants to make friends with the native Californians, the Indians, and baptize them. But Mission San Diego is in trouble. Many of the California Indians resent the Spanish invaders. Some of the Spanish are sick and all of them are hungry. The food supply is low. The leader of the expedition, Captain Gaspar de Portola, summons the Padre to his headquarters. With him are two soldiers. <clears throat> you sent for me, Captain? Padre, our situation is getting worse by the hour. I know how dearly you wish to go north and build your second mission near Monterey Bay. I know your deep desire to preach to the native people, but I fear the time is near when we cannot hold out any longer. These men can tell you. First soldier, the soldiers are hungry, Padre, and many are sick. Soldier number two, they're afraid of attacks by the Indians that you love so much. Soldier number one, they don't want to die, Padre. Soldier two, especially not here in this empty place. They want to return where men speak our language. Soldier number one, and where there's medicine for the sick. Soldier two, and good Spanish food. Padre, I know how the men suffer, but we are on a great mission, brothers. It is the king's work. It is God's work. Surely if we wait just a few days more, the supply ship will come from Mexico City. Captain Portola. Ah, yes, the supply ship, the phantom supply ship, Padre. I am beginning to think there is no ship. Soldier one, perhaps it's lost or shipwrecked. Soldier two, perhaps it will only get here in time to bury us all. Portola, you see how it is, Padre. As the leader of this expedition, I am responsible for these men. It is time we prepare to return to Mexico while we still can. Sarah, no, Captain. If we lose faith now, the mission will fail. Then no one will ever dare come here again. God's work will never be done. Soldier one. If God wants us to do this work, God can send us a ship. Soldier two, or drop some bread and water from the sky. And 
That's what we need, Padre. We need a miracle. Sierra, no, no miracle. Only a little faith. I beg you, Captain. Wait a few days more. Look, St. Joseph's Day is only nine days away. That is a great and holy day. Wait until then, Captain. Surely we can hold out for nine days. Captain Portola. You trouble me, Padre, all this talk of duty and faith. Very well. You shall have your nine days, but if the ship has not come by St. Joseph's Day, we return to Mexico. Narrator. For eight long days, the Spanish watched the ocean, anxiously looking for the welcome sight of a sail. While Sierra prayed and begged the men to be brave, Portola paced and grumbled and worried. Every day the supplies ran lower and the men grumbled more. At last, St. Joseph's Day dawned, but still there was no sign of a supply ship. Once again, Portola called for Padre Sierra. Well, Padre, I have waited longer than I wished. Now St. Joseph's Day has arrived, but no ship. I have given orders to begin preparing for the return journey to Mexico. Sierra, the day is young, Captain. The ship may still arrive. Portola, you are stubborn in your faith, Padre. I admire you for it. But I must make my decision on real things, not prayers. We need food and medicine. We need hope, Padre. We leave for Mexico tomorrow. Just then, excited voices are heard outside. At the lookout where the men have been watching the sea, soldiers are shouting, Look! A sail! A sail! Portola and Thera run to the lookout point. Portola, a sail, you say? Where? There, Captain, in the midst. Sierra, I knew it would come. Portola, a sail it may be, but it's the sail of a phantom ship. I can barely make it out in the fog. Pah, it's just the trick of the light. Soldier two. No, Captain, the mist has closed around it, but we saw it. Clear as day. Well, nearly. It's the supply ship. Portola, then why does it not turn this way? Why does it disappear into the fog going north? Soldier one, they might be lost. Oh, curse this fog. Soldier two, look, it's vanished. Maybe it is a phantom ship after all, Sierra. Captain, it is no phantom. That is our ship. I know it. It has come on St. Joseph's Day. Portola, it has come and gone, Padre. And it has taken our supplies with it. Sierra, perhaps they are lost, Captain. Please wait a few days longer. They will find us. Now that we have seen the sail, we must have courage and wait. Narrator, impressed by Sierra's faith and the incident of the sail, Portola again agrees to wait a few days more. Four days go by and at last, Sierra's faith is rewarded. Once again, the cry, a sail! goes up over the settlement. This time there is no doubt that Spanish ship San Antonio has arrived with badly needed supplies. As soon as the San Antonio is safely in the harbor, the ship's captain rushes to Portola's headquarters. <clears throat> Portola, your ship is a most welcome sight, Captain. We had given up hope. Well, <laughs> except for Padre Sarah here. Sarah, but then we saw your sail. 
on St. Joseph's Day. It was your sail, wasn't it? Ship captain. <clears throat> yes, it was. You see, my orders were to sail north and meet up with Captain Portola at Monterey. We only came back because we had trouble up the coast and needed repairs. I had no idea you were so desperate or we would have brought the supplies here directly on St. Joseph's Day. Sierra, you brought us something better than supplies, Captain. You brought us faith. Ship Captain, it's a strange sort of faith that grows stronger when your food passes by you. Portola, never mind that now. The important thing is the men will be fed and made well. And judging from the captain's orders, I believe I know what we must do next. It seems we are expected to go up north. You shall have your second mission, Padre, and many more after that, God willing. Sierra, yes, many more. A chain of missions, Captain, strung like jewels on a string along the coast of Alta, California. Portola. Soldier, yes, Capitan, cancel the order to prepare for the return to Mexico. Tell the men to eat well and to rest. They will need their strength. And when they are fed and rested, what then? What then? Why, I believe Padre Sierra, I have an idea. <coughs> <clears throat> Sorry. To Monterey? <clears throat> yes, we leave Monterey. That's it for today. See you next time. <clears throat> Bye, everybody.